Uh, my name is Soyun Bi or Sohyun Bi, depending on which language you're speaking to me. And for the next 10 to 15 minutes, I'm going to be talking a lot about myself, uh, simply because my work comes a lot from personal stories. And in fact, in order to give you a sense of my background, I'm going to start this presentation with a little anecdote. <laughs> so. I was about to turn 10 years old. I was living in France, uh, finishing my third grade. Uh, but when I finished third grade in the summer, uh, my family moved back to Korea. Once in Korea, I learned that kids of my age are actually um, halfway through their third grade, since their school year starts in spring and not in autumn. So I continued on with a Korean third grade. And uh, a few months into this extended third grade, uh, my father announced that we were moving again. Uh, but this time to the United States. So before I could even finish my school year, uh, that winter we moved to the US, uh, to Virginia to be more specific, and for some reason, um, I was again put into third grade. I ended up doing third grade on three different continents within the same year. <laughs> So that's my rather confusing background. Um, I grew up speaking and writing Korean, French, and English. But eventually I went back to France and did most of my studies there. Uh, I studied visual communication at the Hauteur des Arts Durand in Strasbourg. It's also where uh, I got more and more interested in, in type design um, to get familiar with the term typographic matchmaking when speaking of non-Latin type, <laughs> and uh, started to develop as well this naive idea of a radical matchmaking between Latin and Hangul, Hangul being the writing system of the Korean language. What I really love about Hangul is to see each character get composed uh, like little animations and when typed on the computer, and I wanted to obtain a similar effect uh, with Latin. And by making Latin behave like Hangul, uh, I wanted to break the smooth texture of Latin text so that it matches the uneven texture of Hangul text. With these ideas in mind for my master, I began des designing Silaba, a Latin typeface that imitates Hangul. For the design of this typeface, I followed the same logic as Hangul. Uh, for those of you who are not so familiar with Hangul, uh, Hangul is a phonetic writing system uh, that works in syllabic blocks. So one composed character represents one syllable. Here you can see the word kulta, meaning letter or character, written in two blocks, uh, so in two syllables. The character on the left represents the syllable ta, uh, sorry, <laughs> the syllable kul, which is composed of k, and the character on the right is the syllable ta, composed of t and a, ta. And all of these little components are what we call tamo, which are the smallest components of Hangul. Um, there are in total 24 tamo, including 14 consonants, called taum, and 10 vowels called boom. And as we saw earlier, the tamo are combined within a character in a block, forming a single syllable. There are mainly six ways to compose Hangul, with compositions adapted for syllables that end with a vowel, like the syllable cha we saw earlier, and structures adapted for syllables that end with a consonant, like kul, uh, with final consonants inserted at the bottom of each structure. So, how to apply this logic of Hangul onto the Latin alphabet, and more specifically to the French language. Um, I'd also like to point out that this font I developed is specifically adapted for French syllables. Um, French, English, German, they, might, they, sh they may share all the same um, Latin alphabet, uh, but they don't share the same syllables. Following the logic of Hangul, I started by sorting the Latin alphabet into vowels and consonants and then establish what I call an extended alphabet by including all 36 phonemes of the French language. Uh, but for those of you who are familiar with French, uh, you would know that in French, there can be several different spellings for the same phoneme. Uh, so for example, if we take uh, the phoneme O or the sound O, uh, this sound can be written in many different ways, <laughs> starting with the letter O, A-U, A-U-D, 
LT, and much more. Um, this must be why French is a beautiful language. I then started to look for ways to compose um, according to the number of letters per syllable, and I based myself mainly on two kinds of structures, a structure in two stories um, for syllables that are in pairs consonant, vowel, vowel, consonant, and a structure in three stories for the syllables that are sandwiched, so a syllable structured in consonant, vowel, consonant. And then I began sketching my typeface based on these uh, different structures I had established and started to experiment with different typographic styles, um, starting off by distorting monolinear sans serif fonts um, and fonts with serifs, while also wondering what it could look like uh, with strong contrast. But eventually, due to the complexity and density of uh, each glyph, I decided to come back to simpler shapes uh, for better legibility. During my master, I was able to design about 700 glyphs, uh, which already allowed me to start composing words and sentences. And what you're seeing right now is a book called Deux syllabes, or Two Syllables, uh, which is also the type specimen of syllaba. So basically, I placed one syllable on each page uh, so that when we look at the double spread, we recognize a word in two syllables. Um, so my type specimen is a collection of French words in two syllables composed uh, out of the 700 uh, glyphs I had already drawn at that point. Being based in Munich today and learning German, I couldn't stop myself from drawing German syllables. Uh, I ended up making these uh, little cheat sheets uh, for German articles that changed depending on its function within a sentence. Uh, so for example, the masculine article der, written D-E-R, changes to den in accusative and dem in dative. Uh, but the feminine article D, written D-I-E, also becomes der in dative. Uh, I think it's normal, nobody really understands what I'm talking about right now, uh, since I myself is still lost with these articles. Um, nevertheless, I find German fascinating. I named my typeface Siraba after the Latin term that uh, originates from ancient Greek Siravi, uh, which means that which is taken together. After my studies in Strasbourg, I initially planned to uh, pursue Siraba at the ANRD, Atelier National de Recherche Typographique, a typographic research program based in Nancy, also in France, and directed by the wonderful Thomas Yo Marchand. But in the end, my research led me in a different direction, and I decided to explore the relationship between typography and languages in another way, uh, focusing more specific, specifically on my trilingualism. Uh, I, I grew up with my brother and my cousins, uh, and at home we used to speak French or English to each other, which our parents strongly disapproved. Uh, so at some point, we weren't really speaking any languages anymore. Um, and instead spoke a weird mix of all three languages, switching back and forth from one language to another. In linguistics, the speech behavior is known as code switching. So for example, we would say things like, <laughs> It is often a form of communication limited to spoken language or ephemeral writings like chats or SMS to exchange pragmatic informations, uh, but I wondered if it would be possible to give a solid form to this kind of language. So I tried to go beyond these ephemeral writings and decided to actually write little stories uh, while code switching. But I soon realized uh, the challenge of such task. Linguists explained that code switching is a psychological process uh, that takes place unconsciously among multilingual speakers. Um, then how can I write consciously while code switching unconsciously, uh, how can I recreate the spontaneous way of speaking in writing? At this point, I realized that I needed a tool to write simultaneously in the three languages, a tool that could imitate code switching. So I created a trilingual text generator using Python uh, that allowed me to obtain ran random mixes of the three languages uh, within my text. For typesetting these texts, I decided to create my own toolbox and started to draw a font in which the letters are placed on three different levels according to the language. So instead of having one baseline, 
my phone has three bass lines, <laughs> with French placed at the top, English at the bottom. In Korean, overlapping on both French and English in order to differentiate better the two Latin script languages. For the shape of the letters, I chose to draw a slap serif font, as they're often considered as an in-between between serif and sans. It seemed like a coherent choice considering the trilingual and hybrid content of my text. I adopted a similar approach for Hangul and, and designed a font sharing both characteristics of Myeongjo, a classical serif style mostly used for texts in books or newspapers, and of Kodik, a style comparable to Latin sans serif. During my research at the INRT, I ended up drawing a quite limited glyph set but enough to typeset one of my trilingual texts. I then asked my brother to read it out loud. Majimak day, the third grade. I walked towards la maison a company of Nanma, who m'avait prêté her hand pour the kill. I turned Kazo Platet pour dire farewell à my friends, qui were éclairés en contre-jour par le sun du evening. These adieux étaient hors de moi important, car je knew que cet été was going to be different from previous ones. Et effectivement, il s'avère que c'était que le début d'une année restless. At home, Takagu lost leur raison en tout descendant and waited d'être embarqué in their first trip to Corée. Pour moi, ce n'était certainement not the first time, car je spent always mes summer breaks there. Jusqu'à ce que j'avais 9 years old, je n'ai connu que la Corée estivale et l'été Korean. But this time, après leaving Yongnyeon en France, je savais that j'y allais y stayer to learn all his schedule there and discover in all his états. Tout s'est passé so vite, du Changyuk et Lincheon, until I retrouve myself à marcher once again avec my Amma towards my new Hakyo or Red Birkdol. When we arrived at the Ipko of the Gombol, I learned that we had to take off our shimbal, put them dans a sac, and wear des chaussons. Unlike the bright rouge of l'exterior, the Bukdo were sombre, and my high-end chaussons me paraissaient indiscrets. As we arrived devant my class, my mère made a sign by the chant of the Kyoshil. An authoritarian woman nous a ouvert la porte and welcomed me. Je me suis ainsi retrouvé devant everybody to me présenter, holding quack dans my main, the sac à chaussures. Écoutez, je vous en prie, comme dit-il.